Hi, welcome back to Thwack Camp. My name is Thomas LaRock, and today we're going to talk about a developer's perspective on distributed software as a service database monitoring. Now, you might know me more as a DBA. I was a developer in a former life, but in order to help me with the developer part, today I've invited my old friend, Carlo. Carlo, say hello. Hey everybody, this is Carlo Zatilny, Distinguished Engineer at SolarWinds. Happy to talk about uh, some cloud native database development with everybody. That's great because I, I like how you said cloud native. I think cloud native is a misused term. I often hear people just say, oh, we're gonna look at this database, it's a cloud native database. And to me, cloud native isn't about a database, it's about an application or a system. Do you find some type of misinformation around there, uh, the use of the word cloud native? Absolutely, cloud native means different things to different people. And so what we really need to do is just clarify what that means. And it's, it's about taking things into consideration like cost, multi-tenancy, security. How do we address those while having a publicly exposed service? To me, that's cloud native and building things in a way that satisfies all those business needs that we need to satisfy. And I think that's an important point. Uh, and I usually tell people, when you think cl something cloud native, think of something that's also globally distributed. So just because it's a database doesn't make it a cloud native database. Uh, any database could be the back end for a cloud native system. That's what I try to remind people. Now, as a developer, uh, I think, I think, some of the tools that you use might be, say, more of the application performance monitoring side. And we have one of those that we call App Optics. Is that a tool that you find yourself using a lot? Of? Yeah, absolutely. That's super valuable for us to use as developers. So uh, why don't we take a look at that and jump right in? Awesome. So as we look at App Optics, Tom, we can see that this is just a, a classic API call into one of our environments, and it has a different uh, view into the different layers that are going on. But importantly, this is one of my query or one of my API calls that has a few different queries executed during the call. And so when I'm looking at the traces in app optics, I often will find that a lot of the time is being spent in specific queries as they're getting executed through the system. And app optics gives me great information about the actual execution time of the query as it's going from my trace into the database. But what I need to know as a developer is if this query time is OK, or could it be better? There's lots of things that, as developers, we need to learn as we start to write code in a cloud-native way, because we won't always understand how the software is going to be used by our customers. So as it is running in production, we need to take the time to evaluate is 771 milliseconds really an OK execution time? And if it's not, what are the actions I'm going to take to remediate that? Will I need to change the architecture or database design? Or will I need to consider another database store altogether? You mentioned S3 earlier, and it's definitely a great option for us to store data in, with MySQL being another one. But as we go cloud native, we have the opportunity to look at some other highly specialized databases that allow us to do certain types of data storage in more efficient ways, whether that's numeric time series or logs or search index documents. Whatever data we're dealing with, there's a lot more options given to us as cloud native developers. That does require us to work closely with our DBAs and DevOps to take full advantage of a more diverse architecture because we don't need to necessarily have to think about how our customer is going to have to deal with these on-premises. We can grab more efficiency by using the variety that comes with being cloud native. This gives us the opportunity to take a look at query time and determine, is this MySQL even the right target for this type of data? If it is, great. If not, do I need to look at Cassandra or ClickHouse to store something in a more efficient way for my data? And that's part of the power of app optics that gives us the links into DPM where DPM can start giving me insights into the analysis that I need to say, is my target actually the right place for my data? Am I executing at the level that this needs to be? So uh, if I understand this, so this is one API call here that actually has three specific SQL queries. Is that correct? That is correct, yeah. Yeah, and so we can see, so even as a dev right now, like I said, if, there, if a 
somebody had joined the um, company and they were working on this app and they knew nothing about it. This lets them see, oh, they might have only known one query. And they're like, well, where are these other two? And you could look at these and say, well, do I really need to run all three of these? Or could I run just one query and have that data uh, available to satisfy whatever is needed for the API call, right? So this is the efficiency part, right? So right. this whole API call took, what, 1.7 seconds. It looks like 1.69 was just on these three queries, correct? Exactly. Yeah, so maybe, you know, that, that costs money. That's money in cloud, right? So maybe we could uh, think about some consolidation or just tuning the queries themselves. Right, precisely. And that's where we need to start diving into the database side of things to evaluate the performance, not only for the customers, but to your point, the cost is also a big concern. Am I writing and designing the software in a way that our company can, also, can make money and meet the business needs of both our customers and ourselves? So for... Cloud Native, uh, I think I have this right. As, as I shift from the traditional legacy, everything in my data center, or at least under the dev's desk, that's where everything, all the data is, right? Uh, let me think. It's throughput, uh, latency, concurrency, and errors. Is that right? Yeah. These, the, these are my four golden metrics. Yeah. Latency, traffic, errors, and saturation. Those are the golden metrics that we've talked about before in different sessions. That's the magic. Are we getting the best performance from a latency perspective? And if not, are we getting higher latency because of the saturation being too high? Are we getting a lot of requests to a specific place that we weren't expecting? Or are we seeing a lot of errors? And are we getting the data throughput that we need? Or are we sending too much useless data or not enough data? So yes, it's hitting all those golden signals. And super important for us as developers to know that we are writing the most efficient code to give the experience that the end user is expecting. Well, I happen to know where those metrics are inside DPM. You want to take a look? Yeah, that'd be great. Let's take a look. Awesome. So, Carlo, I've got the uh, summary page up for DPM right here, and uh, as you can see, there we've got about twenty. Oops, we've got about twenty hosts connected. So we're looking at basically uh, an aggregate summary across all these hosts. That's not really helpful. What we need to know is, uh, you're gonna, as a developer, you're going to come to me and say, hey, I need some information. Uh, I'm running this app. And I may or may not have an awareness of all the database servers that are uh, running or grouped or anything like that. So with DPM, once you register machines, you can also uh, group them. And then you can see down here. So I'll just look and say, all right, you know, I know it's the API server, and I know this is. I have a primary, a primary. I know there's a secondary here, API 4. I'm just going to assume that this group of servers, this helps give me that high level information to understand, you know, what's really happening here, or at least the architecture involved. And uh, you may or may not say to me, oh, it's it, the problem is over at the API server or MongoDB or, or uh, a web app server. But with this inventory pane, at least I have an idea of the machines that might be involved. So if I come back to the summary page, and real quick, if I just say, if I type in here, API 4, uh, we'll say this is the MongoDB server I wanna look at. So now I can filter, and now I'm gonna get just a view of just that host. And remember, I talked about those golden metrics. So right here, right around here, database health. So latency, throughput, concurrency, error rate. These are the golden signals. And I can see, if I hover over it, I can see exactly at 11.41 when the polling happened. Uh, I can see the correlated metrics for the resource health as well. So now you got your CPU, your network, your disk, your memory. These are all things familiar to any database administrator, whether you are new to the field or you've been doing it for a long time and you're old, um, in your experience like I am. Uh, you know, the metrics, the resource health metrics, that those are the things every every database has. And you can also include locking and blocking as well. So top queries by count. Whoops, I keep tr having trouble with the scroll. So I down here, I also get top queries by count, top queries by total time. And that's where you as a developer might say, oh, I know which one it is. Uh, it's this particular query that we're trying to look at. So we have an idea of the queries by count total time. That gives me good information. If, you, if I'm ever wondering what this summary page might want to tell me, DPM has a wealth of knowledge base articles hidden inside of it to give you an understanding of what you're really looking at. So I'm looking at you know, the summary page for, for
for this particular environment. I can also see the API 4 actually covers, there's four different uh, uh, nodes or hosts involved in just filtering on that API 4. So if I remove that filter real quick and we just say, uh, Carla might come to me and say, you know what, it's a top query by total time and I really need you to help me figure out what we can do to optimize that. So now it brings up that query and Carlo was kind enough to tell me this is what he wants information by uh, or about. I can look right now, I'm looking at a metric of total time and I can see when it's run and I get an idea of some of the metrics involved uh, at that particular moment. Uh, I can tag things, which is really important. Uh, Carlo would tell you anything related to DevOps, tagging is extremely important. So if you had were deploying changes, you could uh, then come in and say, all right, I, I want to tag this particular um, query in, in whatever way, annotate it however you need to. Now, what I see here are an idea of the host breakdown. So web app, app two, app three. You know, if I'm supposed to have an understanding of how much time is spent, like if I'm using some load balancing, I might want to think that these should be a little more equal. Maybe, maybe not. I see performance, I see average latency, total time, the count. So 8,540 uh, executions here in this particular time frame, which is a one hour time frame. And additional metrics, how many rows, how many of the queries were slow, and the 99th percentile of latency. Uh, so this is giving me information at, at a pretty good level for me to give back to a developer to understand the uh, the real effect that this particular query is having. So seeing this information, Carlo, what are some of the things that you might start considering as a developer in order to optimize this particular query? Well, as I look at this data, there are a lot of things I can do with the software to optimize performance. Looking at the host breakdown, oftentimes we're going to look at sharding the data across different servers to optimize performance. So seeing that there's a, a misbalance might tell me that I did my shards across my servers in an incorrect way. So I might reconsider that because I shard maybe to be multi-tenant. Maybe I, I'm doing my shards based off of uh, certain customers go to different shards within my system. And maybe that's not the right way to do it. So as I look at the data, I might need to reconsider how I'm distributing my data across my different servers. So it's very powerful and insightful for me to come in and see those percentages. So I can say, maybe my approach isn't the best or it's looking good. And I'm willing to keep my shards that way. That's because with cloud native, what I'm really looking to do is have a nice distributed system in a way that makes sense for my customers and for my data. So being able to see that distribution really tells me if my design is succeeding at its intended purpose. Or should I be looking to shard based off of other parameters like time, geo, or what those variables are that I should be paying attention to in fine tuning the sharding. The other thing that I'm looking at here is the, the latency, total time and count. You know, if I see that something is having a strange amount of latency, uh, I might need to look and say, you know, what's going on at those specific times? Is my data partitioned in a way that makes sense? Again, in a multi-tenant environment, what we might be looking for is partitioning our data off of user ID because I don't want other users being able to see each other's data from different organizations. Or maybe I am partitioning based off of time. Am I storing data based off of time of day and day of week when those specific events happened? So if there are specific problematic areas, we might need to look at if the database is doing some summarization routines or performing backups during those high latency times, maybe I need to adjust my partitioning in a way that yields query effectiveness and gives the performance we need consistently over time. As I look at the query counts, I think, do I need to look more into caching? Caching can be such a valuable tool inside of the software because what we are able to do is take some data that is written very infrequently, but read very frequently and put that into a cache so that we're not consistently hitting the database and putting some unnecessary load and unnecessary traffic and unnecessary latency back and forth. So that's where a really key, that's a really key performance counter for me to determine if the software is behaving in a way that I'm expecting. As a developer, you try to make guesses and estimates 
But then when it goes out into the real world, you might notice, oh no, they're hitting this all the time. And this is a really popular feature and I wasn't expecting that. Or maybe the software isn't being used in the way that I was hoping for the software to be used. And this data gives me the opportunity to make a change. So if I see that something is being read a lot, written not very often, there's the opportunity to use a cache. Now, in, in my experience, cache is one of those ways that you can uh, really reduce costs in the cloud, right? Because yeah, that's, that, that's, that's one of those optimizations. Like if you can identify ways that you just have to read the data once or, or get it into cache and then just read from cache, you get great performance and uh, you reduce the bill because you're not moving that data back and forth all the time. Exactly, and cloud native is such a great opportunity to use services provided by your cloud platform or use one of the many open source projects available. And these software components are available in a way that make it so you don't have to be an expert to get the cost benefit you gain from using such a technology. Also, there is no large amount of overhead to your engineering as you can take that off the shelf service and immediately see the benefit. So I'm gonna finish up here. I was gonna point out the uh, health. One of the things that I like as a DBA is this best practices, right? So I can come right here and we've talked about how, and we'll just imagine that a lot of these are, we'll say, are the back end for cloud native applications. And I can come in here and say, all right, this Postgres, I have nine recommendations, 45 occurrences. You know, this gives me information that says, all right, what's my cache? Is this something actionable that I can do? It should be configured with a value of 15, 75%. This is a great way for me, because I, I may have experience with Postgres, but I may not have as much with MySQL or MongoDB. But the information is right here for me. And I can come in here and I can get the details. I have an idea. As a DBA, I know there's only four bottlenecks, memory, CPU, network, and disk, right? So coming in here, this gives me a nice summary and I can be have a positive effect on performance for all these different platforms. I don't need to wait to get you know 10 or 15 years experience in just one particular area. A tool like DPM helps identify these best practices. I understand what it means to go in and um, rebuild an index or update stats, things of that nature. So I really like this and how it summarizes for me and I can filter and say, you know, show, show me the critical ones. Uh, they're all right here, as a matter of fact, agent configuration. Yeah, I can just get an idea of what's really uh, happening in my environment on a regular basis. Uh, I can see events, I can see faults as well inside the MySQL or Postgres engine. Uh, nice high level view for me. Uh, in addition to looking at that summary view or exploring and profiling and comparing queries over time, what DPM really does is it gives me that ability to be effective, especially in an era where I think a lot of apps are really starting to become, like I said, globally distributed, cloud native. In a lot of cases, when people are thinking about going to cloud these days, they, they do think I'll just lift and shift. And then they realize that probably wasn't the right choice. Now they're starting to think we're gonna build something new and we're gonna build it from the ground up and we're gonna do it with a brand new architecture. And a lot of the traditional database monitoring tools, they aren't really configured to help monitor those type of application uh, architectures, DPM is. I want to thank you, Carlo, for your time today. I appreciate your developer's perspective. Uh, this was a lot of fun. We should chat more often. Yeah, definitely. All right. For Thwack Camp, I'm Thomas LaRock. And I'm Carlo. Thanks for watching and enjoy the rest of Thwack Camp.